Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Lost in the Shuffle, episode 41. Today is a very special day. First off, we want to say pay the uh, pay the fee, guys. We, don't, we have a P, uh, fee for the show. So if you enjoy the show, you learn something, you like something, it makes you laugh, go ahead and share it. Share it with your friends, social media, whatever that is. Um, that's how little uh, and smaller content creators grow. So we would appreciate that. Today is very special. We have the very talented, the very lovely, maybe even the songbird of our generation. Boy, wow. That's Tampa, a Tampa Bay Rays sideline reporter, Trisha Whitaker. <laughs> Woo! Hey, how you doing? Good. How's that for an intro, Trisha? Well, I was generous. I was very generous. <laughs> good, good. Well, you deserve it. So, Trisha, you are the professional. You are uh, the journalist. I want you to rate me how I did at the end of this interview. I want you to be harsh. I want some real feedback, okay? Deal. Got it. You don't have Fair to enough. Me. So, Trisha, you got the dream job. You get to work around the game of baseball, and you're around an awesome team, the Tampa Bay Rays. You get to work around Tyler Glass now, Wander Franco, Kevin Kiermeyer. Super handsome. Uh, G-Man Choi, Nelson Cruz joined you guys. Brett Phillips, Austin Meadows. I can keep going. Uh, tell me what your experience is like working around the Rays and, and what it's like every day. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, those guys are so entertaining. They're such good human beings. They're easy to talk to. They make my job easy, which is hard to do for reporters and professional sports. When an athlete makes your job easy, you know that you're around a good group of guys. I mean, obviously, Brett Phillips is awesome. You mentioned Glass now. Nelson Cruz is great. Randy Rosarena is phenomenal. So I, I you're, you, you were correct when you said I have the dream job because for me right now, this is the dream job. I love it. Yeah. So what is that? What is your relationship with these players? Obviously, you're with them so much. You guys, you guys got good um, chemistry on camera and stuff like these like these like your buddies like during the season or what? Well, you do get to know them pretty well and you get to know their families really well. So there's some of them I'm really close with, like even their grandparents or like their <laughs> aunts and uncles or their, you know, their girlfriends, their wives. I've watched some of their kids, you know, kind of grow up in the last few years. So it's actually that's I'm glad you brought that up because that is probably the most special part of this specific job. Um, you know, I don't, I, I'm there to be the team reporter. I'm there to give everything an optimistic twist. I am there to make them look good. So um, I have to establish that trust with them. And I feel like it's been easy to do over the last few years, just because of the quality of people that they have. Um, and that honestly, that really is my favorite part of the job. I love getting to know their families and, and where they're from and stuff like that. It really does become one big family. It's awesome. And that's what it feels like too. Like when you, you covered so many good games, like I just think about September, there's so many good games in September leading into the playoffs. And just like those exciting moments that you share with those players are just like, I just imagine it's something you'll never forget about. And it's just like very special as it's going on. Oh, it is so special as it's going on. And you know, what's funny is like those interviews that you do, I, I consider that a really important thing in those moments, in those big moments of their career to get those interviews right for them. Because for a lot of them, that's one of the moments that they're gonna look back on at the end of their career and be like, all right, I hit that walk off. Let's look at that interview, you know? And if I don't do my job right, I'm not doing that memory justice for them. So I wanna make sure that it gives them a good memory while also, you know, provides what the fans need at home on the broadcast. But that's the coolest part of it is like, you are a part of that history of their career now. When you're the one doing that interview with them, when they hit the walk off or like when Glass now had that game where he had a career high of, I think it was 14 strikeouts, doing that interview with him immediately after he walked off the mound, that's there forever, right? And I, that's, that's another cool part of, of this specific gig is, is being a part of that in their career. And one of them that stands out to me, um, I forget the player's name, but uh, you were talking to him um, in September. I think it was after a playoff game. He's like, I was in Mexico a couple weeks ago, and now I'm here getting showered with champagne. Like that will live on forever. You know, in the digital era where everything is captured, like that is such a cool, special moment. Like you said, for his family, for you and yeah. for the organization. Johnny Davis. That was the that, most animated yeah. interview I think I've ever done. He's like, he's like, man, I was in Mexico a week ago. And now I'm in the playoffs. Uh, and, and we're going to the postseason. Like, let's go! And he's like screaming at the camera, and he's yelling, and they're pouring beers all over our head. And that was honestly, that was such a cool moment because that interview went viral. 
And Johnny Davis, like, I mean, that's, you know, he hasn't like, uh, that, that was, that was probably the peak of his baseball career. Yes. Huge highlight. That's a cool highlight for him. And I love the fact that, you know, I was able to be a part of that and do it justice, I guess. And you kept composure very well because when you're going into that environment, you know, you're getting soaked, right? You're going to have champagne in your eyes, your hair's messed up, makeup. So very good composure on your part. Thank you. Appreciate next, that. next thing hard. I it, it, oh, I'm sure because you got to, you know, you have all these things that you want to cover and all this, you know, craziness is going on behind you. It's, it's fun though. It's, yeah. I'll never forget it. And I hope that the celebrations in the clubhouse get back to normal this season. Yes. Is Brett Phillips just as cool off camera as he is on camera? Yes. If not cooler. He is. Okay. So it's not just a, a, a show. Correct. No, Brett's, Brett's the real deal. Um, and I get asked that question a lot because even people who aren't raised fans know Brett Phillips, but he is just as cool off camera as he is on camera. It's not like an act. He's such a good human being. Um, his wife is amazing. Um, he has so much pride. I mean, I would sit there during the, I would be doing the pregame show right on the field before every single home game. And I swear to you, almost every single home game, Brett came out and signed autographs for like a half an hour before the game started. And there was such a long line of just kids excited to meet him. And he always says, he always says, I wish that somebody would have taken the time to do this on a consistent basis when I was a kid coming to raise games. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to be that person. He's the real deal. He's awesome. He's just such a good human being. And I also thought the way that he responded to being left off the postseason roster this year was just classy. I mean, that's Brett, you know, he was yeah. like, he made a joke out of it, but then he was like, listen, I trust this team. I trust Kevin Cash. And for me to respond any other way would not be appropriate. And right. so he's, he's awesome. Beautiful. Well, obviously this is your passion, right? You can tell that comes through, through your work. Um, and you might've touched on a little bit earlier, but I just want to know the most rewarding part of your job. What would you say the most rewarding thing is? Being a part of those moments and being mm -hmm. a part of their lives and getting to know their families and having the platform to tell their stories. I, I love storytelling. I've loved storytelling since I was like little I would write the most random weird stories you've ever heard in your life but now I get to actually write real stories right I get to mm -hmm. tell real stories I get to talk about you know when a player gets called up and I get to talk about I get to interview his parents you know his mom's crying his dad's crying his little brother's like wide-eyed and crying I mean those are the moments that you just you never forget that is the most rewarding part of the job is telling a story um, that touches people and that, you know, is going to just live on forever. I mean, some of those stories, like those are ever going to go away. And those are, those are, that's my favorite part of the job. Um, yeah. I think cause a lot of the underlining, um, motifs or themes behind those stories is, you know, perseverance or hope or, um, things like that. Like those stories that you get to be a part of really have substance behind it as well. Oh, for sure. The substance behind those stories is what, makes it such a powerful thing and you don't know who's watching you know those little kids who just want to play baseball when they see somebody who has a similar journey to them or looks like them or sounds like them mm -hmm. I mean just like what it does I think we underestimate that as the broadcast team sometimes that that has such an impact those stories that we tell and it's our responsibility because if we don't tell those stories nobody's gonna hear them you know right. and so that's the best part very good now, Trisha, you are a busy woman. You are also an adjunct professor at Indiana University Media School, where you are an alum, and I believe your father has a sports history class there as well, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Trisha, if I were in class this week, what would we be learning about, or what would we be talking about? We would probably be working on our on-camera skills. So I'd throw you right into the fire, I'd put you right in front of a camera in the studio, and I would make you do highlights of a college basketball game. So I'd make you anchor the show and then I would heavily critique you right after the show and tell you what you did right and what you didn't do right and how you need to dress for on camera, how you need to talk. So that's what we would do. I'm, I love my students, they're the best, but I always tell them I don't sugarcoat because it's not going to help them. Yeah. Um, so I, I teach them, I love them, but I'm also very honest with them. So that's that's what we would do today. I would critique your skills for your podcast as well. <laughs> yeah. The sink or swim approach. I like it. 
Send them right to the fire right away. Well, not only do you do that, Trisha, but it looks like you have a little passion or um, for singing as well. You're quite the singer. You put that on your social media. Um, and I really appreciate people um, because I don't want to be defined by one thing. I don't want to be the guy who made one video or who does interviews. I like, I, I feel like I'm talented enough to where I'm very well-rounded. So when people display that, maybe something that they're not comfortable with, I really applaud people that do that, that have a talent like that. So um, I just want to see where this singing came from. And is it just something that's therapeutic to you or something you'd like to do on, you know, when you have free time, what, what, what is that? You know, it's so funny. A lot of when I do podcasts, that hardly ever gets brought up, um, and I'm so I'm glad you brought it up because the point is, you you have to remember that your job is not who you are. Um, it's what you do. And while I love my job and I love storytelling, and that is a part of who I am, if you don't disconnect from that, sometimes it's going to drive you crazy, and you're going to put your whole identity into that, and that's a very dangerous place to go. Um, mentally, that's a dangerous place to go. I think that's ingrained in us. What is what is the first thing you say when you meet someone for the first time? What do you do, right? Do you it's do? just something that's ingrained. Like, I don't like to introduce people. Like, I'd rather know, like, what are you passionate about? Or like stuff yeah. like that, that that's something about you, not just what do you do? Like you said, what you do is not who you are. I know, yeah, it's it's true. And 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 to a certain extent, it is part of who you are, but it's not, it's 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 not who you really are, right? Um and I had to learn that I think kind of the hard way. Um, I think I realized halfway through 2020 when we had baseball taken away from us, I was like, who am I without this? Yeah. You know, and I always knew who I was, but I focused so much on baseball and so much on my job and not enough on, I think the relationships in my life and the passions that I did have. So I got a keyboard and I started singing. And I've always sung, I, I've always taken voice lessons since I was like eight years old, I've taken voice lessons and I used to do musical theater and sang choir and everything. But I like almost forgot about that passion. And mm. when I realized that I forgot about it, it made me really sad. And I was like, hold on, like yeah. you cannot let baseball take that away from you because baseball's not always gonna be here. You know, mm. my, you, everybody at some point loses their job. You know, that's, it's not forever. Right. So you have to remember who you are outside of that. And so this off season, I actually really focused on figuring out who are you outside of baseball? Who are you outside of sports and outside of broadcasting? And I reminded myself who I was because I felt like I forgot about it. I reminded myself, I'm a daughter to a fantastic um, set of parents. I'm a granddaughter. I love singing. I love teaching. Um, and I have some of the best friends in the world. And I feel like, I feel like for the first couple of years on this job, I forgot about making that a priority, not to get too deep, but we went there. <laughs> well, it, it makes and sense though. Idea. Yeah. Because this job takes up a lot of your time. So it is only natural that, yeah, you become a part of that. Oh, I am a part of the race. I am a part. So it makes sense because it does take up such, a, you're not clocking in nine to five done. And then you can leave your work at home. You have research to do. You have editing and, and interviews. Like you have so much to do. So cut yourself some slack because it does take up a lot of your time. Oh, thanks so much. It does. It does. And I love it. I love it. And I'm so glad if something's going to take up my time, I have a job that I like absolutely adore. But I do think, I think Tyler Glass now said this in an interview actually about a year ago. And I told him, I was like, Hey, like what you said really kind of resonated with me. He said something like you can't make baseball everything. And this is coming from a guy who's like really good at baseball. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, and even he's just like, He'll when we're in New York City playing the Yankees, he makes it a point on like the off day or like before a game the next day, he goes to Central Park and plays chess in the park with people. Like an old man? And, yeah. Like he goes and plays chess with random people who don't know who he is. Wow. And, you know, we're kind of like, Tyler, why, why do you do that? And he's like, well, I got to like get away from baseball. That's not all of who I am. Right. And I remember him saying that and I was like, oh, damn. Like I got to do that. Yeah. I got to go to a random park and like play chess or something, you know, yeah. and he's right. He's right. And I love that perspective from athletes when they realize that because mm. you're not going to play baseball forever, you're not right. gonna play basketball forever. Who are you when that's over and who is still in your life when that's over? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's a perspective. I, I wish more people understood in 
in um, athletics. I love that quote from Moneyball, right? We're all told. Some of us are told when we're 18. Some of us are told that we're 40, but we're all told when the game's over, right? Mm-hmm. It's yes. exactly true. And it's the same way with broadcasting. I mean, when it's over, it's over. Who are yeah. you? And who's still there? So I think that would be a good segue into my next question. Trisha, where do you see yourself and your career in the next 10 years? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Honestly, this is the first job I think I've had in my entire career that I'm not actively like looking to leave. Like I love this job (laughs) Um, and it makes me happy. And I love the people I work with. And you do get to a point in your career where it's, it's not about what's the next thing. Like, how can I, how can I, um, how can I get something better? How can I um, make more money? How can I get more, more eyeballs on me? And that, you can get to a dangerous point in your career if you constantly do that. Mm -hmm. Because when you get, when you're not like, you know, in your twenties anymore, and you get to the point where you're like, hmm, do I keep, want to keep moving around the country? No, I want to be somewhere where I'm happy and where the people I work with make me happy. Um, And that's where I am right now. And that's a really good place to be. And again, for the first time in my career, I mean, I've only, I've been in this for about, 11 years now for the first time in my career I'm not actively looking to leave I mm-hmm. like it so I don't have an answer okay that that's I love, it. I love that perfectly I fine <laughs> you'd be the same spot right that's I'd be good fine. if I was in the same spot in 10 years some people would look at that and be like don't you want to constantly like improve and move up well what I am up I, right. I, I am up. this is a great place to be I'm doing good I think that's another thing that's ingrained in society too, is always looking for the next best thing, right? The grass is greener over there. Every like swipe, if you're dating or whatever, like I'm going to find someone better, a new job. And it's just comes down to the grass is greener where you water it. It's not greener over there. If you really, you know, cultivate what you're looking for in your life and creating that, then you should be happy where that is. Right. 100%. And that doesn't mean, you know, that there isn't a time to move on or that if there's a, opportunity that you really really have dreamed about but at the same time you're right like the grass is not it's not greener and Mm -hmm. I can say that confidently with where I work right now like I've been other places and the grass is not greener right yeah (laughs) yeah if you got it good stay there right so Trisha I want to know who has been the most influential person or people in your um professional life my professional life. Oh my goodness. That is a really, really good question. Um, you can talk about your personal life too, maybe a parent or sibling. Yeah, so honestly, professionally, one of the people who kind of mentored me a little bit from the beginning was Sage Steele. She was an Indiana University grad too. And she really just um, help me with perspective on the career and everything. Um, but honestly, professionally, like this sounds really strange, but like my parents, so like my dad is a pastor, so he's a public speaker essentially. Yeah. And I watched him speak in front of people all my life and tell stories all of my life. Um, and it kind of taught me how to tell stories and it taught me how to, um, you know, just act when you're on camera or when you're in front of a crowd or whatever. Um, so I know he's not a broadcaster per se, but like that really does influence you growing up. I mean, I would listen to him tell stories every single Sunday for the last 32 years, you Mm -hmm. know? So probably my dad, even though he's not a broadcaster. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That would be my answer. Well, they can still influence you in different ways. And I, I don't think it has to necessarily correlate with your job, but maybe how you go about doing your job and the principles um, that, that take place in order to do your job well. So I, I completely understand with that. 100%. Totally agree. So Trisha, today is two, 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 two. Did you know that? I've that... seen that all over social media. What's the big deal? Is it just because I... it's like a lot of twos? Or it's like... a pa- yeah, it's a palindrome. Just like uh, January 1st of 2011. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Whatever. But cool. I thought it would be a good time to play turn two. So I'm just going to rapid fire give you two options and then you give me your choice. Okay. Okay. Got it. Real easy. So here we go. Turn to uh, hot dog or nachos. Nachos. Yes. Beer or cocktail. Beer. 
Walk off home run or suicide squeeze? Walk off home run. Hanging curveball or forcing fastball down the middle? Forcing fastball down the middle. Downtown St. Pete or downtown Tampa? St. Pete all the way, baby. I love downtown St. Pete. Uh, Universal DH or no DH? Universal DH. Opening day or first playoff game? Oh, first playoff game. All right. That's turn two. Those those are all good ones. Ones. Yeah, those right? Are those are really good. Thank you. We get some weird ones, but those are good. Yeah, I tried to make it obviously baseball related, but um, sure. that's all I had for you. I didn't want to keep you for too long, but I do want a rating. I want you to rate me just like you would the students. So give me some feedback. I'm going to go ahead and give you an A because Whoa. I you did a really, well, here's the thing. A lot of podcasts I do, it's just strictly baseball. And it's just like, come on. Not everybody wants to hear about baseball for like 20 straight minutes. Like we love baseball, but you got to add some personality and some flavor to it. You got to keep it moving. Right. Um, You got to add some fun pieces to it. I mean, seriously, that's what TV is nowadays. You don't turn on the TV and just hear X's and O's for 45 minutes, you know? Right. So you did a really good job of incorporating that stuff. Very engaging. And also, also... I grew up a Cubs fan. Nice. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I obviously am all in on the Rays now. Yes. But I did grow up a Cubs fan, and, and that is the team that uh, I watched with my dad growing up that made me love baseball. So I that didn't know that. Cubs. Yeah. I did not know that. So, yeah, I am originally from Chicago, uh, born and raised, and oh. I just moved here to New Jersey. So I'm right outside of Philly. I just moved here uh, like this summer with my wife. Uh, Cause that's where she's from, but yes, Chicago Cubs. And um, did you get to, you obviously got to enjoy 2016, right? Oh my, we enjoyed it. Um, it was awesome. I watched it with my, with my dad when they won. And it was one of the best memories of my life. Just like watching that with your dad and just remembering where you were. And that game was insane. That was yeah. the craziest game <laughs> ever. Yeah. I mean, it was just nuts. I'll never forget it. And I'll never forget Chris Bryant's smile as he's throwing it over to, you know what I mean? It's yeah. Joe Buck's call of it and knowing he's a Cardinals fan, yeah. a rain delay and everything. I, I like messed up my elbow that night. Yeah. Jumping up and celebrating. I can't remember what play it was, but I jumped up and celebrated and I was like, yeah. And I like <laughs> hit my elbow so hard on this bar stool. And I was like, dad, we got to go home because I think I broke my elbow. <laughs> oh my God. And so I'm sitting there in my dad's like man cave in his basement, watching this game with an ice sling around <laughs> my arm. Yeah. And when they won, I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> now we can go to the ER. <laughs> yeah, now we can. Thankfully it wasn't actually broken. I was just being a total baby, but yeah. it, was, it was just so many great memories. Well, that was really special to me because like you mentioned, it was a generational type of thing. I watched it with my Nani, who's like my grandma, my dad, my brother. Um, So, you know, my Nani, she's, what is she, 90 something years old now, lifelong Cubs fan, listen to Ron and Pat on the radio. And to see her, she's been waiting for so long. My dad has been waiting for so long. I haven't seen one my whole life. So that was, yeah, I think one of more of the special ones because it was a generational curse broken. And I actually have a shirt. I was going to wear it, but I looked a little, it was a little bit too tight, but it said, what if I told you 17 minutes of rain would wash away 108 years of drought. Oh, that's so yeah. good. And you know, that's, I, you know, I think I thought of it that way, but I never actually, you know, verbalized it that way. It is, it was a generational victory and that's what made it so special is because, you know, I remember I did a story on one of the guys I was, I was in Indianapolis at the time as a sports anchor. And I went up to Wrigley after they won the next year for the ring presentation. And I did a story on, he was like 92 or something. And he had been waiting for the Cubs to win. And the Cubs gave him a ring. It was just a random fan. His name was Irv Schreiber, I think. And they gave him a ring and he got to give, um, I think he got to give Kyle Schwarber his ring. And that just kind of, to me, was like super cool because I was like, wow, this is a generational thing. Like this yeah. guy's been waiting so long. And when they won, he's jumping up and down and he's saying, I got to see him win it. I got to see him win it because who knows how much longer he's going to live. But he right. Got- yeah, they, they did a, um, a like a sweepstakes because we entered my 94 too. Yeah, and it was like, 
all these fans, yeah, get to present it to a player, go on the field. Um, and yeah, it was a lot of older um, people, you know, that who've been around for so long, but yeah, very cool promotion by the Cubs. So um, Trisha, thank you again for your time and for, you know, taking time out of your day to sit here and talk um, some baseball with me, talk about your life. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Enjoyed it. Thanks for having me.